welcome to the Sussex Football Show with me, Dean Kilford, and powered by your instant replay. Burgess Hill broke a run of four straight defeats with a four-all draw away at Tidewood chasing Haringey Borough. They need to start picking up three points and were looking to do this this past Tuesday night at home to Harlow Town. But they got off to the worst possible start on five minutes when a cross from the right was miscontrolled by Lawrence Vaughan straight into the path of Matthew Foy to give the visitors the lead. Four minutes later, another attack down the right saw Foy use his strength to muscle Jonah off the ball and cross for Tom Hitchock to side foot home. It took a while for Burgess Hill to respond. Pat Harding with their first real effort on goal, cutting just past the post. Well, they should have had one back just before half-time. Any sort of touch from Ben Pope would surely have resulted in a goal. To make matters worse, Harlow went straight down the other end and were awarded a penalty when Foy was bundled over when through on goal. Foy then stepped up to grab his second of the game. And this was the 12th time this season Burgess Hill had conceded three or more goals in a game. A much improved performance in the second half from the Hillians was rewarded when James Richmond headed in from close range. A nice turn from substitute Mullerit and a clever pass gave Pope the opportunity to further reduce the arrears, but he was denied by the legs of Bexon. Harlow Town come away with all three points. Burgess Hill Town without a win since New Year's Day. Worthing played Potters Bar Town looking to keep their unbeaten February run going as they look to stay in the hunt for the playoff places. Oddy Pearce nearly gave them the lead with this cross shot that rattled the woodwork. There didn't look to be too much trouble when Sean Bonnet Johnson picked up the ball midway inside the Worthing half but the midfielder bamboozled Parsons before unleashing an unstoppable drive into the roof of the net to put Potter's Bar one up. Satch was then played in through on goal when Worthing had Perntrow's legs to thank for keeping the score to one. A corner on the stroke of half-time came through to Jones. The defender has come up with a few goals since his arrival, but he couldn't keep this effort down. Kwame Poku was making quite the impression on his debut for Worthing, and his drive on the right caused problems for the Potters Bar defence. A mix-up meant Pierce must surely score. James Budden sliding across to prevent a certain goal. And just when it looked like Potters Bar Town were going to hold on for a clean sheet and three points, up stepped that man Jones. Pierce made a nuisance of himself and the tall defender was on hand to poke the ball over the line and rescue a point for Worthing. The one-all draw means Worthing have picked up only 16 from a possible 45 points at home this season. It was the FA Cup fourth round at the second time of asking for Lewis Ladies as they made the trip to Dartford to take on Millwall Lionesses. Lewis have struggled recently but showed no sign of that in this game. Sophie Perry getting an early sighter for the Roquettes. Rude found space from a throw in and nearly caught the keeper out with a clever finish to the near post. Millwall really didn't make much of an impact on the game in the first half and that trend continued into the second. Perry getting two bites of the cherry but Sansom was equal to it. And then looked like Lewis would get the reward they deserved. Perry's free kick seemingly going over the line but inexplicably being ruled out for offside. Lewis were reduced to 10 men with 8 minutes remaining and Millwall made them pay. A deep cross bounced favourably into Neville's path as she fired it into the corner to send the Lionesses through to the next round. <laughs> the 
It would be a hard result for the Rockettes to take as they dominated much of this tie, but their FA Cup dream ends for another year. Three Bridges and Haywards Heath served up an absolute thriller last Tuesday night. The tone was set when Clark's mazy run ended with a shot that curled just wide. Midway through the first half, we got the breakthrough. Callum Saunders picking up the ball and having a go. He found the corner, first blood, Hayward's Heath. Clark was enjoying himself on the right and his cross was laid off into the path of Connor French who rifled in the equaliser. And five minutes later the game was turned on its head. Brandon O'Neill was the first time finished to whip the ball beyond the keeper. Ten minutes after the break, George Gaskin made it three. The forward cushioned the ball, then reacted fastest to guide the ball beyond the keeper. A minute later, Alex Lang reduced the deficit. The midfielder completely unmarked to head home from six yards. And Callum Saunders then levelled things with an absolute worldie, catching the keeper out with his free kick just inside the three bridges half. There was more drama as Hayward's Heath Town were awarded a penalty for this trip on substitute Trevor McCready. Saunders stepped up, but he couldn't complete his hat-trick. James Shaw with a fine save. Nathan Cooper won it at the death. A corner in stoppage time headed in at the near post. The final score in a seven-goal thriller, three bridges, three. Haywards Heath Town, four. Stenningtown welcomed Alfold in a top-of-the-table clash. And it was the home team who scored the crucial first goal. Ryan Timms at the back post to turn the ball home. And within 15 minutes, Stenning were two up. The keeper didn't get enough on his punch and Alfie Grip was there at the back post to steer the ball into an unguarded net. And that two-goal lead lasted just five minutes. De Meyer had the chance from the spot after Null was needlessly brought down in the box. And he sent the keeper the wrong way, and we had a game on. Midway through the second half, we had parity. Andrew Howard guiding this free kick perfectly into the corner. Andrade then completed the turnaround when he held off the challenge before getting his shot away and somehow worked his way through the keeper and into the back of the net. Deep into stoppage time, Grit got his second. A long throw was flicked onto his path and he looped his header over the keeper. A six-goal thriller and a share of the spoils. Alfold stay top, a point clear of second place Stenning. Thank you for watching the Sussex Football Show. I've been Dean Kilford and we'll be back next week with all the best of Sussex football. Powered by your instant replay.